Hello, it's a beautiful afternoon in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'm Jordan Davis with Atlantic Marine, and today we're traveling from Myrtle Beach to Charleston, South Carolina via the Intercoastal Waterway. We'll leave here from Grand Dunes Marina and head south in the waterway through the Waccamaw River, out into Winya Bay, behind Isle of Palms and Sullivan's Island, and finally out into the Charleston Harbor. If you're not familiar with how to get to Myrtle Beach, from Wrightsville Beach. We have another video for that segment of the trip and other videos including Beaufort, Bald Head Island. Uh, be sure and check those out at AtlanticMarine.com. Today we're traveling on a Grady White 251 Coastal Explorer powered by a Yamaha 300 horsepower V6 engine. All right, before we begin, let's check a few things. First, I'm up to date on my routine maintenance. I've got plenty of fuel for the trip and my registration is valid. Also, I've got a fire extinguisher, a horn or a whistle, throwable flotation device, plenty of life preservers for everybody on board, flares that are in date, an anchor, and I've also got a pair of binoculars. Also, one quick reminder on navigation, when you're traveling clockwise around the United States in the Intercoastal Waterway, red is on your right. Another way to remember that is red is on the mainland side of the Intercoastal Waterway. And that applies almost everywhere. There are a few exceptions, like Winya Bay, and we'll stop there and explain the different sequence and markers. Today, our trip is over 100 miles, and we want to be sure that we maintain the Intercoastal Waterway Channel the entire trip. We can do that by looking for the presence of yellow markers on the Intercoastal Waterway Day markers. We're looking for a yellow triangle and a yellow square uh, the entire trip. Those yellow triangles and yellow squares will remain constant, meaning the yellow triangle will remain on the mainland side, even in a place like Winya Bay where the marker sw sequence switches. Also a reminder on VHF channels, uh, a VHF radio is a, is a great resource to have on your boat, especially when you're traveling. Uh, it allows you to communicate with other boaters, the Coast Guard, and uh, marinas that you may be pulling up to. Of course, hailing and distress is always channel 16, and the bridges in South Carolina monitor channel 9. Now that's a little different from what you may be used to in North Carolina where they monitor channel 13. We'll be leaving from mile marker 357 and traveling to Charleston Harbor Marina, which is about mile marker 465, just slightly north of there in the Charleston Harbor. Today we're expecting a wind out of the east at about 10 to 15 miles an hour. All right, we're getting ready to pull out of the marina at Grand Dunes and head south. The next stop will be the Grissom Parkway Highway Bridge, which has a clearance of 65 feet, so it'll be an easy pass. We're passing under the Grissom Parkway fixed bridge. There's a vertical clearance of 65 feet. There are going to be a few more fixed bridges along our route today, uh, so we're not going to stop at every one, but we will, uh, we will point them out to you in the video uh, as we continue on. The next stop is at the Seaboard Coastline Railroad Bridge about five miles ahead. We're at mile marker 365.4 on the Intercoastal Waterway, and we've reached the Seaboard Coastline Railroad Bridge. This bridge has a 16-foot vertical clearance when it's closed. However, it's open to waterway traffic most of the time unless the railroad needs to be used. Immediately uh, following the swing bridge is a fixed bridge for Highway 501, and just ahead is the Fantasy Harbor fixed bridge both of those with 65 foot uh, vertical clearance. All right, we'll continue on south. All right, we're at mile marker 371. We're pulling up to the Sockisty Swing Bridge. It's charted at 11 feet of vertical clearance. We're going to ease up to it and see if that's actually what it's reading right now. Uh, and see if we'll be able to make it through with our antennas down, uh, considering we do have a T-top on the boat. If not, we'll call the uh, bridge tender on VHF Channel 9 and ask them to swing it for us. All right, it's a tight squeeze, but we did make it with about a foot of clearance. 
If you can clear the bridge without requesting an opening by laying down your antennas or outriggers, if you have those, that's the right thing and the courteous thing to do. Just off our bow is the Sockisty Fixed Bridge, another 65 foot vertical clearance bridge. I also want to mention that when you're coming through the Sockisty bridges, uh, that it's a no wake zone. It's also a good idea to slow down at any swing bridge or draw bridge, um, even if it's not a designated no wake zone. Just over a mile ahead is the Carolina Bays Parkway Bridge construction site. That's a Highway 31 bypass around Myrtle Beach. And we're gonna slow down there if, the, uh, if there's construction equipment or barges, uh, give them a slow pass in the area. That's just a mile ahead or so. It looks like construction is complete on the Carolina Bays Parkway Bridge at the water level. It doesn't look like it's open to highway traffic just yet. Um, so there's really no need to slow down in this area when you come through as long as other conditions are safe. All right, we're gonna continue on south. All right, we've arrived in the intercoastal waterway where it meets the Waccamaw River. You wanna mind your markers in this area. There are some markers leading up the Waccamaw River. We're at uh, day marker 27A, that's a green marker. Uh, so just pay attention, green's gonna be on our left, heading south, red on our right, uh, and also look for the yellow triangles and the yellow squares to confirm that you are looking at a, uh, an intercoastal waterway marker. Some say that the next 25 miles of our trip are some of the most scenic that the Intercoastal Waterway has to offer as we wind through the Waccamaw River. All right, we're at uh, Green Day Marker 57 in the Waccamaw River in the Intercoastal Waterway. And I wanted to point out to you that there are some great anchorages in, uh, up and along the uh, Waccamaw River. Some protected areas um, that you can kind of cut off the side of the river. You'll see some vessels in our background that are anchored, uh, anchored here today. Just remember you're always responsible for your wake, regardless of whether or not you're in a no wake zone. But certainly if you are in a no wake zone, you need to be back at idle or slightly above. We're at mile marker 402.1. Uh, right behind me is the Lafayette Highway 17 fixed bridge, vertical clearance of 65 feet. Just ahead is Winya Bay, which is a coastal estuary that's the confluence of the Great PD River, the Waccamaw River, which we've just been traveling in, the Black River, and the Sandpit River. The Winya were a Native American tribe living in the area until the early 18th century when they were thought to have merged with the Waccamaw. We've reached the Georgetown Harbor entrance, mile marker 403 and marker number 40 in Winya Bay. Here, the international navigation rules apply. So when we're coming from a larger body of water and returning to a smaller body of water, red is on our right. Since we're heading from the smaller body of water to the larger body of water, which would be the ocean, red is on our left and green is on our right. I also want to point out to you that the yellow intercoastal waterway markers remain constant with the yellow triangles still on our right or mainland side and the yellow squares still on our left or ocean side. This is a little tricky but a chart can help simplify this for you. We'll continue on another three miles until the intercoastal waterway departs the Winya Bay Channel into what is referred to as the Western Channel. Next we'll be looking for the marker two at the entrance to the Esterville Menom Creek Canal. All right, we're at mile marker 410 and day marker number two, that's red number two. We've just made the sharp southwest turn to starboard out of the western channel from Winya Bay into the Esterville Menom Creek Canal. This is a very sharp turn, and if you're not looking for it, it would be very easy to continue straight on in the Western Channel, uh, which would eventually meet back up in Winya Bay and on out to the ocean. 
We're gonna proceed about another mile or so to the Esterville Benham uh, Swing Bridge. It used to be a pontoon bridge that would float across uh, on a cable system and has just recently been uh, replaced. As we approach the Esterville Minim Swing Bridge, uh, you will realize that it, it stays open most of the time to vessel traffic unless there's a vehicle that needs to cross, which is pretty infrequent. We've arrived at mile marker 415 and red day marker 16. We're getting ready to cross the North Santee River. Uh, be mindful of strong currents in this area. And about five miles ahead, we'll also cross uh, the South Santee River. We've arrived in McClellanville. This is mile marker 430 on the Intercoastal Waterway and day marker 35. Just ahead is the Francis Marion National Forest. Uh, Francis Marion was a Revolutionary War uh, military officer and known as the Swamp Fox. Many of you may have seen the movie The Patriot and Benjamin Martin's character in that movie was loosely based off of Francis Marion. So we're getting ready to ride through that area where he lived. Also want to point out Right behind me is another channel that breaks off from the waterway. And you want to mind your markers. That channel is surprisingly well marked. It leads over to the, uh, to the inlet. Uh, lots of commercial fishermen, um, recreational fishermen use that channel. So mind your markers. Make sure you stay in the waterway and you don't break off to the port to the left uh, heading into that channel. All right, let's continue on ahead. Looks like we might have a little rain ahead. we've arrived at Isle of Palms. Uh, we've run into a little bit of rain. Um, the, uh, the Isle of Palms Marina is behind us here and there's Morgan Creek Grill. You know, I put about 10 miles to the Charleston Harbor. Do slow down this area. There's a fuel dock, some jet ski rentals, that kind of thing. Uh, just ahead will be the Isle of Palms Connector Highway Bridge. Uh, 65 feet of vertical clearance, so, so no issue there. All right, let's continue on. All right, we're at mile marker 462.2. We're uh, about day marker 121 at the Ben Sawyer Swing Bridge. This is the bridge that leads over to Sullivan's Island. Uh, it's no wake zone, um, and you got about 30 feet of, uh, of clearance here uh, charted at this bridge. So most vessels, even with antennas and riggers up, should be able to make it under without requesting an opening. If you do need an opening, again, VHF channel nine. We're going to proceed about a mile ahead um, until we uh, get to a, another short no wake zone uh, before we enter Charleston Harbor. All right, we've just come through the no wake zone behind Sullivan's Island, uh, still in the rain, uh, getting ready to enter Charleston Harbor. Uh, we're going to go up the Cooper River, uh, up that direction, about two miles to the Charleston Harbor Resort and Marina. Um, if you are going up the Ashley River or you're going to continue south in the waterway, you'd want to cross the harbor uh, and, and pick up those markers on the other side. Uh, there's a lot of water in Charleston Harbor. Most of it is deep. There are a few places that are shallow, like middle ground. Uh, it's best to stay in the marked uh, channels, even though they're, they're significantly deeper than you would need for most pleasure boats. Uh, in waters that you're unfamiliar with, that's the best policy. All right, we're gonna ride on up to uh, Charleston Harbor Resort and Marina. We've arrived at Charleston Harbor Resort and Marina. The rain has cleared out and it's shaping up to be a beautiful evening. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you'll also try this trip with your family on your Grady White boat soon. Until next time, I'm Jordan Davis with Atlantic Marine.